Hey, Ryan here from webeminence.com with another hopefully helpful video. This one's on transferring your domain name. I'm actually going to go step by step through the process and actually pay for a domain name transfer with GoDaddy to show you each step along the way. I have a lot of people who ask me about this process and most people are trying to transfer their domain names away from website builder services like Vistaprint or Weebly, for example, because they want to use other services. So if you have a domain name with one of these website builders, you can really only use it with their service. If you want to build your own website on your own hosting, you need to transfer your domain name away from those website builder services. I recommend GoDaddy for domain management. I've been using them for over 10 years. They're reliable and the changes you make with them take effect very fast and they give you all the functions you need for managing a domain name even if you need to add some custom functions to your domain name like MX records, A records, or changing the DNS zone file. So there's a lot of steps to transferring a domain name. There's a lot of different ways to do it but here's how I do it. It's going to be a little bit different depending on where you're transferring to and who you're transferring from. I'm actually going to transfer a domain name to GoDaddy and I'm going to be transferring it from Enom, which is another popular domain registrar. So the first step in transferring your domain name that I like to take is going to the GoDaddy transfer page and just typing in the domain name to make sure that it's available for transfer. To make this easy, I created a shortcut link for you. Just go to webeminence.com slash GoDaddy dash transfer. And I'll make that link available below in the video description. Once you get to that page, you actually need to type in the domain name that you're transferring. So I have a domain name examplewebsitebuilder.com and if I was to click go to check on that, it does say it's available for transfer. So I'm able to proceed to checkout. If you type in your domain name here and it tells you that the domain name is not available for transfer, the reason is probably because the domain is recently registered. Usually domain names that have been registered within the last 60 days are not available for transfer. With GoDaddy, the domain name transfers usually cost below $10 and they actually add a year to your registration. So I can click proceed to checkout and GoDaddy is always going to try to sell you some other things but I'm just going to click continue and then it takes me right to the checkout page where they show me my total you see it's going to be $8.17, including some fees. And I'm going to go ahead and complete this checkout. So I completed the checkout with GoDaddy for the transfer. So depending on what registrar you use, they, there may be some different information. Maybe they're going to show you some instructions on the thank you page. GoDaddy typically sends out an email to you showing you the next steps. The next step I take is to log in to GoDaddy where I'm transferring the domain name to. So if you're purchasing transfer service from another registrar, just log in there. And then you're going to need to find the information for the transfer. So in GoDaddy, I click on Domains and then Transfers. And I'm going to see the active transfer that I have. And I'm going to click Launch. And basically the next step is to authorize the transaction. So there's a few things I need to do to authorize this transfer and uh, complete it. So I'm going to click their link that says start transfer now and the first step is to add transfer codes. So I'm going to click add now and I'm going to need a transaction ID and a security code. Now all this information you're going to need to authorize the transfer is going to be sent to the admin email of the domain name. So if you're not sure whose email that is or if you activate one of these transfers and you don't get any information sent to your email address, you can check the admin email on the domain name. And the way to do that is to do a who is lookup on the domain name. So you can go to who.godaddy.com to do that. And just to show you the results for a domain name as an example, you're going to want to scroll down until you find the admin email. And that's where this information is going to be sent. So if this is being sent to an email address that you don't have access to, you're going to need to contact the person who has access to this email. It might be Vistaprint, it might be Weebly, or whoever's managing your domain name. That's who you're going to need to contact for this information. So they're going to either forward you the emails or they're going to send you transaction ID and an EPP code that you're going to enter. So you can see here why I recommend 
that people purchase their domain name from an outside registrar because if you purchase it from a company like Vistaprint, they're going to actually have administration rights to your domain name and you're going to be at their mercy in a way. So you're going to rely on them to send you these codes. In my case, with the domain name that I'm transferring, I'm actually the administrator, so the email is going to me. So once you get this information, you're going to have to enter it here. So I'm simply going in my email account and I'm going to first get the transaction ID and security code from an email that was sent to me by GoDaddy. So I copy the transaction ID and paste it in the box and do the same with the security ID or security code and click add. They're going to validate that. I'm going to click next. Now they're asking me to add an authorization code and this is often called an EPP code and you're going to need to get this from your current registrar also. So if this is with Vistaprint, they're going to need to send you this information. In my case, I'm transferring this domain name from Enom. So I logged into my Enom account and I was able to go into the settings for this domain name. And under general settings, they allow me to email the authorization info to the registrant. So I just click this link here and they sent me an email with the authorization or EPP key. With some registrars, you're going to log in and they're going to give you the authorization info or the EPP key right here as text. So you'll just copy it and then paste it into the authorization at GoDaddy. Another important step in this process is making sure the domain name is not locked. So while I'm here, I'll show you that I actually disabled the registrar lock. A lot of domains are automatically locked, which means they're not available to transfer. In that case, you'll need to contact the person who's managing your domain name or just log into your domain name registrar that you're transferring from and just turn off the lock. So in my case, I just clicked disable here and click save. And usually within a few minutes, uh, the domain will be available for transfer. So here's my authorization key email that was sent to me by Enom which is the current domain registrar that I'm transferring from. So I'm going to copy the EPP key and go back to the authorization process that I'm going through in GoDaddy, paste in the EPP key in the authorization code box. I'm going to click the box that says I authorize a transfer and click finish. And now this box says authorized transfer submitted. Your request has been submitted. Changes may take 15 minutes to take effect. So usually you have to wait a while and you'll get an email from GoDaddy letting you know if the transfer was successful or not. And GoDaddy says it can take up to seven days. Most registrars have an automated process for this and they're going to automatically send out another email to the admin email address and that link will just need to be clicked to confirm the transfer and at that point it'll be complete. So I'm going to pause the video here and then I'll let you know how long it takes. Okay, I received the confirmation email from Enom, which is the sending registrar, and they're asking me to approve the transfer. Actually, in the email, they're saying they received the notification, and if I do nothing, the transfer will proceed in about five, five days, actually five days exactly. But you can expedite or cancel the transaction by clicking the link. So I'm going to click the link so that I can expedite the transaction. It's going to take me to this page with some information and all I need to do is read through the information, make sure it's correct and select I approve and then click submit. And the approval went through so probably pretty soon I'll be getting an email from GoDaddy saying that the transfer was successful. I'm going to go back to my GoDaddy account and refresh the pending transfers page. And it does say that I have no pending transactions which probably means that the transfer was successful and if I go back into my domain names for my account I should see the domain name there and I do see it there it looks like they're just asking me to confirm my email address so I'll probably get one email from them and I'll just need to confirm the email address and then it will be final so overall, it took about a half hour to complete the process. I was waiting about 15, 20 minutes for that one email to come through 
cost me about $8 and it added one year to my registration on the domain that I transferred. It was pretty easy in my case because I had access to the admin email address on the domain. For many of you who are transferring from a company like Vistaprint or some other website builder or service who is managing your domain name for you, they probably have themselves listed on the admin email address. So they're going to get all the emails that I got for this transfer. So you're going to need to contact them. And like I said, you're kind of at their mercy. So it may take a little bit longer. So give yourself a week or so to correspond with them back and forth. Most larger companies are used to doing this. So they have a process for it and they will take care of it for you. It just might take a few days. With some of my different clients, I've dealt with some of these different companies in transferring domain names. So I know some of the nuances of how it works with different companies. So feel free to contact me or comment on this video if you have questions about your specific situation, and I'll do what I can to help. And again, this was transferring a domain name from Enom to GoDaddy. So it's going to be a little bit different depending on who you're transferring to and who you're transferring from. But the authorization process is pretty much the same no matter what registrar you're using. So if you found this helpful, I'd appreciate if you click like on YouTube, uh, leave a comment if you have any questions, and make sure to use my GoDaddy transfer link because I will get a small commission if you process a transaction using that link. And the small commission helps me to be able to continue to create these videos and to spend some time answering your questions and helping you out with your specific challenges in transferring your domain name. So thanks for that and thanks for watching this video. Check out my other videos and we'll see you on the next one.